support you and bring the love of Jesus to every listener. We hope to inspire you with the truth, the true gospel, the undiluted gospel, the clear message of Christ crucified and our union with him and the beauty of that and what it looks like. What does our divine relationship with the Trinity look like? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're smack dab in the middle. We are forgiven. We are raised up in heavenly places. We don't have to ascend. We're already there. We are already saved. And it's not our faith that saves us. It's Jesus' faith. And the faith of the Son of God sets us free. So no one can boast about their faith. So if you feel like that, sometimes things aren't happening in your life because you have little faith. Be encouraged. This message is for you. This is all about the strength of God in you, not your own strength. We don't do anything in our own strength. It's all God. It's all Jesus Christ in us, moving, living through us. So today we have a special guest. It's Catherine Toon, and she's going to talk to us about the Divine Feminine. I'm so excited. I have her book, which I will share, and we will get started really soon. Um, not most of you know her by her um, podcast, uh, Catherine Toon. Um, and her website, I will put every, all the information at the bottom of the screen, so you will see that, and you can just click onto her website whenever you like. She has an amazing ministry, she's an amazing um, leader for women and men, um, but I found a lot of encouragement um, through her first book, Marked by Love, um, and I really like the second book too. There's a lot of theological depth that I learned, and I feel like I'm growing more as I read. I'm actually reading it again. There's this section where you actually write uh, what God is speaking to you about specifically, and that really helped encourage me. I hope that'll encourage you, and we're going to have her on our show soon, so stand by. Okay, here she is. Welcome, welcome. Good to have you. How Yay. are you? Thank you so much for having me. This is always so much fun, and it's really such an honor. Thank you so much, and I love you. Yeah. You. Hello to everybody. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. And thank you, Holy Spirit, Jesus, yeah. God. We are just smack dab in the middle of your goodness in your union. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a beautiful honor to have your daughter, Catherine, here today. Thank you. And bless all the viewers who are listening. May this minister to their heart and the message be from Holy Spirit out to the places in the heart that just need some more healing, Lord. We just ask you to, as you are, just continue blessing them and blessing us as we minister the truth and what you've shown us. Thank you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Amen. Um, so yeah, um, I'm actually reading your book for the second time. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, because there was a lot in it. And um, I'm on the second, I'm on the first chapter again. Um, and what my first question that comes to mind was, um, when did Holy Spirit start revealing this truth about Holy Spirit? And how do you explain all the references pastors have used over the years referring to Holy Spirit as a he? Mm -hmm. So would you please tell us about that? How would you, how do you yeah. explain that? So in terms of, you know, God has always been leading me in this in some form or fashion. I would say this really ramped up probably about five years ago. I just had this hunger, something inside that was saying, you know what, if, if God is just male, um, and it's very, very personal to me. I'm like, well, where does that place me? Am I, am I an addendum? And I'm like a, a second tier, like the, you got, you know, the sons, which are great. And then the daughters, which are kind of the second tier. And, and part of this was understanding there's no hierarchy in the Godhead. And so, well, is there hierarchy, you know, between the, the, the sexes and uh, all of that. So it began as a personal study about five years ago. I just started to studying, 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 just going into the diving into the scripture. And just one thing led to another, led to another, started sharing my notes with other, particularly women who were like sensing the same thing. It's like, wh where do we fit in the, in the whole scheme of things if God is just male? Uh, and then it evolved into, I started writing a blog series and then, and then it kept on going and going. It's like, and God was like, honey, this is not a blog series. This is actually a book. And then he kind of gave me the mandate to write the book, which I can literally uh, explain later. But I also wanted to um, answer your question about uh, the church basically presenting Holy Spirit as male. And I would say yes and no. So if you start, because if you start from this presupposition that God is the father 
and that's masculine. Very true. If you dig in the Greek, there's just just masculine. Um, and the sun is masculine, which is true in the Greek. Um, and if that's all you are tracking with, then God is all male. If you're not realizing that Father God and Jesus actually move in feminine ways as well as masculine ways, yeah, you're not grappling with that. And if you're not tracking with the fact that Holy Spirit uh, in the Old Testament, whether it's just spirit or breath, 100% feminine. So in, in, in the Old Testament, Holy Spirit is 100% feminine as a noun. And actually in the New Testament, Holy Spirit is either gender neutral or masculine. So there's this mixture of masculine and feminine. And actually it's a mixture in the entire Godhead when you start focusing on behavior and we can dive into that. So, uh, so you know, the church uh, historically tracking with Holy Spirit as masculine is understandable to a point until it's not. Mm-hmm. And people tracking with father and son as 100% masculine is understandable until it's not. And so this is us just growing in the knowledge of God. Right. 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 It's not it's because, hard, thing, hard to yeah. let go, right? Hard to let go of what we're used to and how we're used to articulating Holy Spirit. Yeah. You yeah. know, sometimes I still say, and he guides me I, I to there's a part of me, and it's probably a religion that's like just not quite comfortable with saying that. Yeah. Oh, she did. She told me this. She told me that. Because for me, I also came from New Age before I met Christ. So exactly. that's my next question. But I'll let you finish. I love <laughs> you know, that. How is this? This is not New Age. That was my question. Like, oh, but I would say New Age is actually tracking a lot of times with things that we haven't embraced in the church that are God okay. To say that that Christianity is the only has has the lock on all things Jesus mm-hmm. is actually wrong is because God you know God one of the things about Holy Spirit uh, traditionally like within the church fathers and mothers has been called the modesty of God so what is the modesty of God it points to something other than self, than self. Which, right so and so Holy Spirit's pointing to Christ but what's interesting is Christ and Father also point to Holy Spirit because that's what other giving love does wow. um, when Holy Spirit is moving in someone who's just spiritually hungry, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Holy Spirit will present um, truth, which we've got to admit that there's truth that we see that is really Jesus truth in Buddhism. Now, nobody panic mm-hmm. in all the new age. The problem is they don't know the source and then they get a bunch of other junk mixed up with it. Yes. That makes it messed up. But that's not that God hasn't revealed something. You know, yeah. even in Romans 1, God says God has revealed himself in the creation mm-hmm. to everyone, so we're without excuse. So, in other words, and an act, yes. and an act to the pagans, exactly. they're revealing you unknown God, right? <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of like all of us, yeah, we're tracking with it rightly until we're not okay. And so, there's truths. I'm not saying go out and do new age and Buddha because you it really centers around the person of Christ, but what the church has done has misrepresented, has represented God well and represented God crappy. And we've done it both. So we've got to figure out what's chicken and what's bones. And so in this whole concept where God is only masculine, um, you know, it, it it is a disservice to God. Okay. And it's a disservice to ourselves. But where we're uncomfortable saying she, and I can't say that I always, I, a lot of times I'll refer to God as he, she, because God is he, she. Now, what, what gets me in trouble there, just full disclosure, is because people think I'm doing some weird, like, gender confusion thing. No, I'm actually bringing clarity. Right. But if you're not ready for that clarity, right. it's going to be a trigger and push you away. And so I kind of backed off, not because it's not true and I don't believe it, but I don't want you to get so triggered that you can't hear anymore and you can't move forward and dive in for yourself. So yeah. here you are, Nisa, and you are like, I believe in the she thing, but there's a little discomfort mm-hmm. because now I'm thinking new age, right? And I understand because they do goddess worship. Well, we're not, we are not worshiping anyone but Trinity, but let's understand that Trinity is not just masculine, is also feminine. And so we're growing and trying to get past the pain points, uh, either our um, your pain point with new age, right? Or our pain points with religiosity. And a lot of the most pushback I've gotten is actually from Christian women who are accusing me of all sorts of things, you know, one, one, one woman just, and I appreciate that. She said, well, I just believe that, that marriage is between a man and a woman. I'm like, absolutely. Where did that come in? But it brings up all sorts of junk, right? Yes, yes. And then people thinking that I'm taking away the father they love. I'm taking away the Jesus they love. No, absolutely not. But we're expanding no. in robustness. No, and the, that's the thing, like it blows my mind when I go back to some, you know, passages in the Old Testament and relook at them through the Finnish lens. It's like, 
you know, I'll, I'll have people telling me like, God is the father and then you, and then it's the husband and then it's you and then it's your, your kids and, and whatnot with Holy spirit as my guide. That's not always the case in the scripture, but we're under the new covenant mm-hmm. and it's the law of love and salvation is all about sozo and healing. And that's what it's all about. So why are we bringing in the old when we're supposed to like, let go of the old and enjoy the new wineskins piece I wanted to mention about the um, he, she gender. Mm-hmm. I think I've been dealing with some pushback there too. People think, you know, I'm leaving the faith and trying to accommodate for, for people who might be um, uh, in a different gender, you know, gender confused. I do support people's decision. Everyone's free to make their own choices. God, God but, supports our decisions, right? But, but I will stand on my ground that I wouldn't want anyone messing with my child's decision when she's a kid, okay? You know, like if someone was influencing my child to try to change her gender, I would have a problem with that. <laughs> and oh, that's mama the mama bear big time. Don't that's mess the mama bear kid. coming out. So I'll say that, you know, and so I have a lot of friends who are actually fundamental Christians who would back me up for that. You know, like I wouldn't want any indoctrination happening to my child. So I can relate to the fundamental Christians. I can relate to the progressive Christian, I can relate to them all. And I think that's what Jesus wants anyways. He wants us to be relatable and relate to all people. And we're including, everyone's included, Hindus, Buddhists, you know, and there's, when someone says the word Hindu or Arabic, there's triggers. It's like, Jesus was Arabic. <laughs> what are you like? Thank you. <laughs> like, it's like some people that's how it actually came in after the Jewish, you know, but I mean, you know, we're, we're, yeah, so let's just, so, so let's calm down guys. It's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. And that's the point. It really will be okay. That is the point. Like God is so masterful. And so many times God, as he and she in masculine, feminine energies, nobody freak out about the energies. I know that sounds, um, <laughs> that sounds new age, but actually that's a Christian concept. Dunamis is energy. Well, God may have some dunamis power right there. You know, exousia is energy, is authority. Well, that's God. So, so that's really a God concept that the new agers have actually done better in their understanding we have. So, so that's not the devil. <laughs> Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, and the thing is, you know, but we can relax because what we're doing is we're just getting another layer of shaking to shake up junk that actually needs to go. Like this is part of God, Christ, you, the one you love and gave yourself of the savior of the world, the world, not just Christians, the world. Okay. All right. The savior of the world, who's actually masterful at his, I'm going to say slash her job. Um, in bring, leading us and guiding us into all truth. And so if it's true, it will withstand the shaking. So let's, let's not back off because it's a little scary. It's like, Ooh, I don't know where we're heading. Well, actually you're be, be understand that this, there's only one way to the father and that's through Christ. So let's be very clear. This is what we're talking about. We're not, we're, we're actually working on the bedrock of orthodoxy, right. but we have to understand, not right? Not. Right. No, absolutely. But we have to understand what we have encompasses the whole cosmos. So if people are confused about gender identity. If people are confused about um, their sexuality. If people are confused about roles of between husband and wife or masculine and feminine roles. If people are confused about who God is and what they're worshiping, God is after the entire world, not in, in a punitive sense, but in love pursuing the entire world. And I'll just, I'll just put, put a little addendum here. So if God is love, the word love is agape, and that is actually a feminine word. So we can talk more about that later, but this is a feminine energy who is a dogged pursuit of every single one of his slash her kids created in his slash her image and likeness and is after that. And is after the ones who profess him and know him to say, okay, baby, you're doing really well. And I so love you. Yeah. But this thing you got over here, this misunderstanding of me, let, let, I'm going to pull that down. And one of the misunderstandings, and this was the mandate that I got from God is that in order to be healed in our masculinity and femininity, we have to see God rightly. Let me read the mandate that God gave me. Cause he actually, as I was writing my blog series, he said, you know what, honey, this is what we're doing. This is what this is, what you've been doing all along. This is what this is. And he told me, he actually told me, I want you to teach on my dual feminine and masculine nature. I am above the gender issue and it's important that my kids grow in seeing me rightly. I am neither male nor female, but in gender both. Okay. So I, I love that. It's, that's actually such a God thing because it actually illuminates and brings more mystery because he saw she's neither male nor female, but in genders both. Well, what does that mean exactly? I don't know. And we are pressing scripture hard and grappling with it and grappling with Holy Spirit, not against Holy Spirit, just to grow in that knowledge because grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God and Jesus's son, right? And 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 our, our divinity, our connection with the divine nature. We're not God, but we are children of God. So that means we're little G gods in the image and likeness of God who need to see God rightly in order actually to be released in the fullness of who we are and the fullness of what we're called to do as partners in the salvation of the entire cosmos okay yes, thank right yes. so um so that is a total god concept and so i mean if in all the places that are it's it's rubbing the wrong way i get it i really get it and it's okay but sometimes that rubbing the wrong way is that we're holding on to traditions of men or we're holding on 
uh, to areas of brokenness in ourselves um, that God is saying, baby, I know that's hard, but this needs to go. Can you give that to me? Can you trust me? Because I'm leading you into something that's going to be such life. And this is you looking at me through, wow, uh, uh, less, less darkness, right? Looking as in the mirror, through less darkness. Let, let's illuminate some. And that's just going to be nothing but life and freedom. And so you, you, you know things by their fruit. So what fruit will this bear? Well, the fruit of this is actually to heal. Okay. So, you know, uh, the, the um, tagline of God, male and female, I'll flash the book. So people know what we're talking. this is it. I know it's backwards. Sorry. This is God no, it's not. <laughs> healing our image of God, healing our image of ourselves and one another. This is about healing. Yes. God is a healer, but we're, we need healing. We need healing in our gender identities. We need healing in our sexuality. We need healing in our relationships. We just need healing in our identity um, that, that, you know, there's so much female bashing and then there's male bashing. And then we go from one ditch to the other. And the fruit of that is some version of hell on earth. Okay. But when, when we grow and sing God rightly in God's masculinity, in God's femininity, that he's, he slash she is neither male nor female, but in genders both. So what does that really mean? So it's nothing's being taken away except, except our religiosity and, and against the brokenness and the lies that we're believing. And God is after that, like a duck on a dune bug, because he's after conforming his slash her kids into his slash her image and likeness, which will look both masculine and feminine. And and if we try to do one without the other, we're we're leaving out number one, over 50% of the population. But number two, we are still operating in the fallenness of the battle of the sexes. Instead of championing one another, we're competing. So we go from male bashing to female bashing. We're going from, uh, uh, loving one another as Christ loves to some sort of hierarchical thing. Um, and we're, we're, um, we're in bondage. We're hurting. We're bleeding out. And if the church can't get this, I don't know what, how we're going to speak to all the people that are bleeding out because, well, I, I feel like I'm a man in a woman's body or a woman in a man's body. Yeah. Um, whatever, sexuality, go ahead. Yes, I want to speak to that because I feel like I might have, I hope I didn't offend anybody because, um, I'm very supportive of, of transsexual and gender and and people that have made changes in their life as adults, you know, as a mother for a child, I, 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 you know, I worry about the children being influenced too young. That's another story. But exactly. there is no condemnation in Christ. And if no, you know, you've made not. that decision and that's how you feel, that's between you and the Lord. No, and and is. there is no condemnation. That is not any of our bit. Really, it's no one's business. <laughs> except between except for people. when it becomes a militant thing that's or destructive to others, right? It's yeah, not if, it is, if, you, if you put that place out on others and try to yeah. get others to do that, then that's different. But yeah, but yeah if it's, you know, that's your, your relationship with your higher, with God. And we would say, because I hear that said a lot, well, my higher power, my higher power. For me, my higher power is God and the Trinity. So the Trinity is, um, and I'll let you, you know, explain this more. I would like you to explain to um, the viewers the the Trinitarian, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Ruach is that? Am I saying it right for the Holy Spirit? Ruach. Yes. Well, so that's one of the terms. Explain the three in in proof texts. That would be awesome because okay, okay, you did so well in your book. <laughs> Yes. So, you know, probably what might be helpful with that, if we start really Just read it <laughs> at the beginning, um, yeah. and, and there's kind of two beginnings, but let's start at the beginning that we normally think of beginning, which would be in Genesis 1. Okay. 1, 1. okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read this, uh, and I'm reading this from the Amplified Bible. I chose that that version for this particular thing because it amplifies so well, and we need some, like, we need to, like, uh, dig. So let's go to Genesis 1, 1, and it says, in the beginning, God, Elohim, created by forming from nothing the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and a void or a waste and emptiness and darkness was upon the face of the deep primeval ocean that covered the unformed earth. The spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, if we go in in that scripture, Elohim, it's the Hebrew word Elohim for God in Genesis 1-1, that is a plural masculine noun. So it's masculine. So yes, God in masculine form, we need it desperately. We need God in masculine form as a rock, a tower, a shield, something that we can stand on that never changes. We need that. Okay. Gorgeous, but interesting plural masculine form. So what is that? So there's plurality within the Godhead comfortable or more comfortable with some mystery and paradox within the knowns. Okay. So, but what's gorgeous about that is that if God, we were able to nail God down totally, like it'd be a puny God, but there's always mystery and discovery. Now, if we can be safe, and loved and rooted in the mystery, then we're into mystery and wonder 
of discovering this gorgeous God who loved us and gave himself up for us. So just thought I'd throw that in there. In verse two, the spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. The word spirit in the Hebrew is ruach, which you got right. Yay, get down with your bad self. And that is a feminine noun. That's right. I thought so. (laughs) It is absolutely feminine. Um, There's another passage that I'll just allude to here. Uh, But let me just say, but in that femininity, let's look what the spirit is doing is brooding over the face of the waters. What is brooding? Brooding is a operating that we see with mother hens. What do they do? They brood over their chicks, right? It's the safest place in the universe. And it's all about procreation. It's all about getting ready for something to happen. These these chicks are are growing and developing, and then they're going to spring out and be independent and be grown chicks and grown, you know, and there's all of this happening and it's protective and it's safe. um, And it's part, it's a necessary part of the development. If the mother hen did not brood, the chicks would die. Well, if Holy Spirit doesn't brood over us, whatever is operating in us is there's going to be death. There's going to be destruction. We need this powerful uh, manifestation of God. Um, and then I, I, you know, you never want to take out one scripture just in and of itself and say, that's it. Okay. This is really bad exegesis. Okay. So let's go to Genesis 1:26 through 28. I'm reading this from the New American standard. It says, then God said, let us once again, Trinity, where did that come from? Oh, because it's always been father, son, and spirit make mankind in our image, according to our likeness, let them So mankind, them, rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over every crawling thing that crawls on the earth. So God created man uh, in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female. He created them. So we see a plurality with the Godhead. That's both masculine and feminine. And we see plurality, plurality, sorry, in humanity, both ma- masculine and feminine in the image of God. Um, and so I'll just I'll just stop there. So this plurality that we're seeing, it's like the image of God could only be expressed in the plurality of humanity as masculine and feminine. Okay. So, but the feminine was originally hidden, but even in the hiddenness, it was present. Okay. So hiddenness does not mean secondary. It means hiddenness until it's not the church. Let's look at the church. So Christ on the cross. Okay. Masculine. Okay. And uh, out of his side, the church is birth. The church is feminine. Was the church a less than? Actually, God thinks the church is so much he married the church. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So this feminine expression, the ecclesia is a feminine noun in the Greek. Okay. And it's an expression. It's actually the pinnacle of God's creation. The pinnacle uh, was humanity in masculine and feminine expression. And if you didn't have the feminine expression, you would not be representing God. Rightly. Right. Uh, because let us make them in our image and likeness. Um, And then later on, I just wanted to bring up one more thing because we're kind of talking about Holy Spirit in feminine form. If you go to Genesis 2-7, so we're really early in the story of humanity. um, And it's Genesis 2-7, New American Standard. It says, then the Lord formed man, Adam, which is a masculine uh, noun, out of the dust from the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living person. So this is the account of masculine humanity um, carrying the feminine inside. And what is this breath, this breath of life that actually made Adam a, a living person is the word neshama, okay? Neshama is a a feminine noun, and that word is the Holy Spirit. So God, masculine, breathed into Ad- Adam, the breath of life, Holy Spirit, that animates humanity, which is feminine, right? So you've got this masculine, feminine, one, two. Here, once again, Holy Spirit, in every reference that I was able to th- find of spirit, breath, um, uh, was completely feminine in the Hebrew. Okay. So I have a question. I have yes. a question, teacher. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so do, is it safe to say that, like, we can look at, for, I, I do children's ministry. So yes, we can yes. look at it almost like um, like a father and a mother and mm-hmm. a baby. 
Mm-hmm. I think that is so good. I think well, it's like, like, just, it's, just for, I mean, I know it's not like literal like that, but like, if you think of them as the divine trio mm-hmm. and you think of a, a mother and a father yeah. and a child. Yeah. yeah. I think that is really good. I think you hold it loosely because if, when you Produce study it out, it does break down. Uh, Cause in the new Testament, Spirit actually is either gender neutral or masculine. But what's important to hold on there is mother and father are very much a thing. Um, and so is son. And so we're not trying to say, Holy Spirit, you're just just feminine. Father, you're just masculine. And Jesus, you're just masculine. Okay. Holy, Holy Spirit is actually represented in all three. Father's represented as masculine. But then what is this weird allegorical thing that happens in the Old Testament where he's got breasts and wombs? What is up with that? So there's a feminine energy that even Father God expresses. And then Jesus, who is masculine, okay, the Christ Christos, and Jesus is a, you know, a, a male name, but the Christos, the Christ is masculine. But then what is Jesus doing? He behaves in feminine ways. Let me give you some examples. Um, so when Jesus is speaking over Jerusalem and just lamenting, like heartbroken, you know, uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you know, I, you know, I, how I long to reach out to you, but you wouldn't come to me. Uh, And now your house has left you desolate. Well, he was pointing to 70 AD, but what is he doing? He's lamenting. What did he want? He wanted the mothering energy, if I can say that, or the mothering way of being, nobody panic, for his his chicks to come to him. And this is a brooding, this is a feminine energy. And then also um, all the AM statements um, that, um, I, you know, God is love. Well, agape, I said, uh, is a feminine noun. Uh, But all the Jesus I am statements, I am the way, the truth, the life. I am the door. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the true vine. Um, uh, the, The bread of life is actually bread is masculine, but life is actually feminine. Okay. So all of that, um, light of the world, that's actually neutral. But the vast majority, I think, is of nine different I am statements. There's out of nine, they're all feminine, except two. Okay. One is neutral and one is masculine. And so what is Jesus saying? It's like the I am is expressed in a feminine way. Wow. What a mystery. 